Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 35. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at creating a quick little fade out screen, we'll add some sound effects onto this door and we'll stop the player from going into this cave door when he doesn't actually have hold of the gun. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else I have on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work on this. So. The door itself currently has a couple of things attached, just has the distance and the display. So we go up to the door and you know we know what we're doing here. So let's add that creak sound and a fade out animation as we go through the door. So we'll start by going game object, UI, and let's go to raw image. And we'll have that raw image stretched and we'll have it zeroed out the entire position. And obviously we'll have it entirely black. Now, it's going to work the same way as fade screen in, just kind of the reverse, but it's nice to have two objects to give us more control. So let's rename it to fade screen out. And if we double click, we can see it will cover the entire screen. And by default, we're going to have the alpha set as zero because we do want it completely see through to start with because it'll fade to black. So the next thing we need to do is set the animation on it. Let's go into the animations folder and on the object itself, let's click animation tab and let's click create and we'll have fade out anim. Save and then press the record button. So we're doing this at 60 frames a second and I want this to go over the course of let's say one and a half seconds maybe, so 90 frames. So let's set the first keyframe shall we? Make sure we're in zero and all we need to do, same as what we did with the other fade screen, we need to set this as zero. So make sure we've put whatever number you can in here, but then reset it to zero. So that is the keyframe. And then by the 90th frame, I want it to be completely opaque. So we set it alpha 255 and press the record button to stop. So it's just essentially going from transparent to completely opaque with the translucency changing in between. We know how animation works. So the next thing we need to do is go to fade out anim in the project window and let's click up here to change to debug and let's change it to legacy because we're using the animation component which gives us a great control. So back to normal and let's have the wrap mode as once because we don't want it looping that would just be silly wouldn't it really. Last thing we need to do in this case is to select a fade screen out and turn it off. The reason we have it turned off initially is because it will interfere with any other UI elements that we have on screen if it stays on because this is now on top of the screen, we don't want that to happen. So let's zoom in to our first person controller. It's all the way down here. And on the door, let's edit that script, cave door, to add in the animation for the uh, fade screen and as well as the sound. So we could have already used the sound because we've used it on a previous door. So all we really need to do at this point is just add in a variable for it in this script. So public audio source and we'll just call it creek sound semicolon and next thing we need to do is add in a variable for that fade screen so public game object and we'll have fade out screen semicolon so the idea of what's going to happen here is on mouse over and inside the action, so if we're actually wanting to go through the door, we'll firstly play that creak sound. So, creak sound dot play. Open oh, close bracket, semicolon. And next thing we'll do is we need to actually allow ourselves to play that animation, but first we've got to turn on the fade screen out. So fade screen out dot set active true semicolon and oh it's fade out screen my apologies fade out screen and after that we need to get the animation and play it so fade out screen dot get component in spiky brackets animation open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes it was fade out 
Anim. And I've said it before, say it again, just remember to have the same name as what you've got for your animation right there. And let's save that script. So if we go back here now, and let's just quickly double check our uh, fade out screen. So next thing we need to do is remove component for animator, because as I said earlier, we're using animation. So click the animation component to add, and then we drag and drop the animation that we created, fade out anim onto there and untick the play automatically. So now, final thing before we can test this out is add those two variables. So fade screen out is right there. And on the FPS controller, on the world sound effects, remember we have that creaky door sound, we can use the exact same one here. So realistically, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna go through this door and play the animation. And I think what we should really be doing is I've already gone ahead there, but I can delete that and redo it. Testing, you know. Uh, realistically, I think we need to start a coroutine. And essentially what's gonna happen is rather than have this here, we could do with that in an I enumerator because we, we need to wait a little bit before we go through door because we want the fade out animation to fully complete. And obviously in testing, uh, that's what I've done anyway and I've left a little bit of code in there, but we can do this now anyway. So we take this line of code, so cut it, and now we put it down here. So I enumerator and we'll call it enter the cave open close bracket, open curly bracket, and paste that line of code there. And then yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And it was 1.5 F because it's a float semicolon. And then finally, we need to take ourselves into that new scene. And because we've already got the uh, scene management there, we can go scene manager dot load scene and can we remember what scene it was let's check in our settings file build settings and it is six so we need to change that to six close bracket semicolon and then finally yeah you've guessed it right here we just need to run that coroutine so start co routine and in brackets enter the cave of close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So now the sequence of events that we've got going on here will allow us to come up to the door, play the creak sound, play the animation, and after one and a half seconds, it takes us to the next scene. So let's give it a go. And over we go. And there we go, straight into the next scene. So. The next thing I wanted to do on this is the case of we can't actually get into this scene through this door until we have picked up the gun. So I wanted to choose the normal gun that we've been using for now. So if we go all the way over here to our trigger, and we just need to make one little adjustment on here. So if we go into the script, and you would need to do this for you know every possible gun that you have, but it's only a quick little one. And what we need to do is set a player pref because originally we wrote this in JavaScript. I'm not happy about having it written in JavaScript whatsoever because this is quite old now, but the same principle will apply. And what we'll do is player prefs dot set int and we'll call this player pref taken a gun and we'll set it to a value of one semicolon and save. So as soon as we pick up that gun, we're setting the player pref to be one, which means by default, it's going to be zero. That means that if we go to our cave door script, which is written in C sharp, we can then add an extra variable up here. So public int, and let's call this taken gun semicolon. And what we can do is in the update method, we can always make taking gun equal to that player pref. So taken gun equals player prefs dot get int and in brackets taken a gun. Put that in quotes as well. So we know we're using the right one. Semicolon. Now 
This script is now recognizing if we've taken a gun or not. So we can then use the fact of on mouse over. And we can use that to say if taken gun equals, that's double equals one, then do the following. And what we'll be doing is everything within that script. So head that into there, make sure these all line up as we can see and save. So the process of events of what's going on here is if the mouse passes over, we firstly need to check if we have hold of a gun because this is now relative to having picked up a gun. And then obviously we check at the distance and then we check if we're pressing the action button and we do whatever else. So if we go back to Unity now, press play, and then try and go through the door. Oops, I pressed play twice there. Try and go through the door, it will not allow us. We will not be able to. Why? Because we not picked up a gun. So let's take our controller and let's bring him all the way over here to kind of cut a little bit of time. I don't want to be wasting time running around for no reason. So let's bring him all the way over here, a bit closer to our trigger. And inside there. Okay, so we're right near the gun. So let's press play and let's test this sequence of events out. We should be able to now pick up the gun, open the door, run all the way over here past the spiders, all the way. See, this is the one problem you have with testing. Sometimes it can take a little bit of time to, uh, you know, get things together depending on the scale of your game. So we head here and now we should be able to go through the door simply because we have the gun. When we get to the other side, the gun won't appear because that isn't embedded in the script to actually allow us to have that gun. So that's something we'll sort out next time. So next tutorial, we're going to have that gun active on the next scene. Uh, we're also going to look at subtitles and we'll also look at having a voiceover. So, you know, we have a bit more depth to the game itself rather than just quiet, barren, you know, we sound effects and uh, voiceover and all that kind of stuff really make a game in the modern day. So... You know, we'll work with that. Maybe with the lighting as well, because I'm not entirely convinced by the lighting yet again. I always like to play around with lighting. And if you have done, then that's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, guys, until that next episode, when we have a little bit of fun with some subtitles, take care and make sure you keep building your game and have a little play around. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.